Well, you join me here today on a clear water gravel pit in South Lincolnshire, and I'm here today to catch pike. Midwinter is a great time to catch pike, but I wasn't really expecting it to be quite as cold as this. We've just gone through the coldest night of the year so far. The margins are still frozen from last night, and I'm not that optimistic that it's going to be a good day for catching pike, but I'm going to make the effort. It's just great being out here and fishing. And the method I'm going to use today is, is ledgering. I'm going to ledger dead baits and I'm going to quickly run you through the tackle and then we'll get started and just see if we can be lucky enough to catch a fish. Well, I've got myself set up in a favourite swim. One I know has got plenty of big pike. Whether we'll catch them on a cold day like this remains to be seen. But that won't stop me from showing you the tackle I'm going to use and the rigs I'm going to use. Now let's look at the basics first. I'm set up on a pod with alarms and three rods. And on a cold day like this, I'm definitely going to need three baits out there. Uh, the chances of even getting one run are quite slim, I think. Now let's look at the basics. First of all, the rods. Uh, for pit fishing, uh, I tend to use a three pound test curve rod. Uh, at the moment, I'm using the, the purest distant uh, dead bait rods, three pound test curve uh, from Shimano and these are great for punching out ledger baits a real long way. It's not always necessary to cast them out a long way, but uh, sometimes the pike are quite close in. But I've got that option if I do need to get a bait out a long way uh, at some stage. Teamed up with uh, the old faithful Shimano Bait Runner 8000 reel, and th these, are, these are the new top of the range uh, models. And as you can see, they are absolutely silky smooth. Uh, the clutch and the bait runner are so smooth, uh, I just cannot believe uh, how smooth they are. At one stage, I would never fish for runs off the bait runner, but you can set these so finely, I actually uh, use the bait runner as a means of secondary bite indication. So that's the rod and reel. Now, what line am I using? Well, sometimes I'll opt for 20 pound mono, but today, because there's a lot of weed here, I'm using a braided main line, 30 pound braking strain power pro, and I always recommend um, a braided line for weedy pits like this because uh, the fish do tend to dive into the weed and, and, and potentially get snagged. I, I can almost guarantee that 30 pound Power Pro will cut through the weed and you will not get a breakage on it. So that's the basics, the rod, the reel and the line. The next thing I want to show you is my standard rig for this style of fishing. Well now I'm going to show you my basic setup for ledgering dead baits. And I do like to arrive at the water with the rods already set up. And this rod is already set up. All I need to do is clip on a wire trace. I don't leave the traces on because they're going to tangle in all sorts of things in your, in your clothing, in the back of the car seat. Um, so this is the basic rig and I'll run you through it step by step as I would build it up. Here we have the main line, the 30 pound braid. There's a, a run ring sliding on there, then a buffer bead, and then a strong clip. I prefer the Gemini type. Um, there are other types of clips, but this is one that never lets me down. And I do like it because it's very easy to, to put the trace on and take it off. And then all I need to do is now clip on my wire trace to the Gemini clip and then you can see I've already got connected another clip down to my ledger and you'll probably be wondering why is it on a long link like that this is a length of 15 pound mono uh, about two feet long with a three ounce lead on the end and it's and it's sleeved up just to neaten it off and the reason I like to have the lead on a long link, uh, well there's several reasons really. Uh, first of all, it's quite, quite common for uh, this sort of rig to have the lead sliding on the main line. But the problem I find with that is that if the lead gets snagged up uh, in a tree or in, in some roots or a rock and you have to pull for a break, your main line is going to break and you're going to leave a trace out there. With the lead on a separate mono link, which has got a couple of knots tied in it to weaken it. If that lead does get snagged up and I have to pull for a break, it's this mono link that will break 
and I shall get the baited trace back. Now, what, why is it so long? Well, when you're fishing in weed, obviously you don't want the bait pull down into the weed. And with this system, the lead drops down into the weed first, not pulling the bait down with it. And then I can just tighten up and pull the bait down until it's just sitting above the weed. And um, it's a setup I've used probably for 25 years and I've never ever found a reason to change it. It works perfectly for me. There's lots of variations on it, but this is the one I choose. All I need to do now is clip on a hook trace. In this pouch I've got lots of different uh, traces already made up. These have got two size 4 trebles. Uh, that's one with two size 8s. And uh, these have got two size 6s. And I've even got some with, uh, with single hooks. Depends on the sort of bait I'm going to be fishing. Today I'm going to choose a hook trace with two size 6s. There's lots of different ways of keeping them. You can, uh, you can keep them on trace tidies where you roll them round, but I prefer to keep them in, in these little plastic boxes. Keeps them nice and dry. You can either buy the traces, there's some very good ones on the market, or as I've done here, you can make them up yourself. My hands are so cold, it really is bitter cold today. I'm, str I'm struggling to undo this trace, but, but there it is, the wire trace I've made up myself. Two size six trebles, set three inches apart. 20 inches of 30 pound breaking strain wire. Size 10 swivel, and that rubber sleeve there is just to pull over the swivel and the clip to neaten everything up. So as I said previously, all I need to do is just clip on, pull the sleeves together to neaten everything up and that's the rig all ready to apply the bait. So just to run through it again, there's a run ring, a buffer bead and my wire trace and coming off the run ring there's a long mono link to a three ounce ledger weight and that's it. I can cast that out into the weed, the weight will drop down and the bait will slowly follow and sit on top of the weed, depending on how tight I, I tighten the main line. I can also, if I want to, pop the bait up. So you imagine now the bait being popped up, I've even now got the versatility of pulling the pop-up bait down to the level I want it to be by just tightening up to the, the mono link. It all sounds a little bit complicated if you've never done it before. In practice it's quite simple and um, as we go along, you'll see how it all works and uh, see the advantages that you get from it. So the next thing to do is to put a bait on and uh, try and catch a fish. But before doing so, I'll just run you through the baits I've got with me for the day. The next thing I'd like to show you are the dead baits that I'm going to be using. Now, whenever I go dead baiting, I always think about the water, um, what baits have been used there in the past by other anglers, what baits have worked for me, and then I go to the freezer and I select baits for the day. Now first of all I'm going to tell you about a bait I haven't got with me and that is mackerel. And the reason is that these lakes have been fished extensively with mackerel and I do know that the pike have wised up to them. Um, mackerel can be a very very good bait but you must remember that pike very soon wise up to being caught on the same bait. So I haven't got mackerel with me today but what I have got is quite a few herrings and uh, herrings work really well on these lakes, uh, either lying flat on the bottom or popped up above the weed. Uh, herring, I mean, it's, it's a very, very good um, bait to start with on any pit. Uh, really oily, very bright. The pike soon sniff them out if they want them. Here's one that is a little bit unusual. This is a bluey. Uh, I believe they come from the Indian Ocean or somewhere over that way. Uh, it looks a little bit like a herring but with more of a pointed nose and it's uh, 
a lot more oily and sticky than a herring and uh, I've actually done very very well with these on these pits um, so I've, I've got a lot of faith in blueies and then probably my favourite bait of the lot, the smelt uh, I wish I'd got some bigger ones um, but even at this size they are very effective smelts have got an incredible smell to them and of all the fishy smells that's the one I love the best and it seems uh, overall that that's the one that the pike love the best um, a bit of a cucumbery smell people say I'm not so sure it, it's it just smells wonderful to me I've caught so many big pike on them and they can be a bit expensive but um, I always have them in as my last resort baits here's another great bait the sardine now if they weren't so soft they would be one of my favorite baits they're really oily shiny very effective but because they're so soft it's very difficult to keep the hooks in and to cast them out they'll often fly off the hooks when you cast them out if you're not careful I generally find that once they're cast out really one run and then they're finished um, you rarely get a chance to cast them twice or three times but a uh, very good bait if you can fish them effectively here's another interesting bait this is the pollen now it is actually a coarse fish they come from um, deep water locks in Northern Ireland and uh, again a silver fish uh, very very effective they've been um, for pike for me caught a few 30 pounders with them but the great thing about them is that because they come up from deep water they've still got a lot of natural buoyancy inside them and they actually pop up naturally and whereas normally you put some buoyancy material inside a fish to pop it up pollen actually pop up naturally because they've got air trapped inside them and then finally I'm going to show you a lamprey now these are these can be devastating at times um, they come into the uh, river estuaries at various times of the year and they're netted and uh, they, they're just such good pike baits on all sorts of waters uh, when you cut them in half they absolutely ooze with blood and juices and the great thing about lamprey is that well two good things uh, you only need quite a small piece and, and the pike soon sniff them out uh, but the other great thing is that when you hook them the skin is like leather and you can often get your bait back and, and catch several pike on the same piece. So that's a quick rundown on the baits I've got with me today. On another day, on a different water, I might have chosen a different uh, selection. But these are the ones I'm going to try. I've got three rods to bait up. I'm going to put a different bait on each rod and cast them to various parts of the pit. And look forward to getting a run if I can. Right, that's dropped in the position I'm looking for. Get the rod in the backrest first, it's a locking rest. Keep everything nice and tight. Line through the alarm. Alarm switched on to a low tone. I like to have different tones, that's low tone. This is a middle tone and this is a high tone. So if I'm not looking at the rods, I know which one's starting to get a bite. Put on my swinger. I'll just use this switch here, which sorry, this switch here, which stops the alarm working while I'm setting up. Otherwise, it'd be bleeping and annoying everyone. Right, I've just put a bit more weight on the swinger. Engage the bait runner. The bait runner is so sensitive that the weight of the swinger is pulling it down. So I've just got to tighten the bait runner up a bit to reduce its sensitivity and that's fine I can just bring the swinger up and then just a bit too much weight on there now that's all nicely balanced so if I get a run a forward run the swinger will move up if the fish should come towards me the weight will drop the swinger down Now the alarm is, uh, is set on roller sensing, you, you can get this, uh, this one set to 
um, to vibration sensing, which is probably more useful when you're carp fishing, although I have used it when I'm pike fishing, when they're quite sensitive. Um, but I've got it set on roller sensing at the moment. And uh, basically there's a roller wheel inside there. And as the line moves forward, it turns the roller and sounds the alarm. But th there's a sensitivity control. So I c I'm a I've adjusted this so that it requires about an inch and a half of movement before the alarm is set off. Uh, if I was carp fishing or tench fishing, I might want to reduce that sensitivity uh, to maybe down to a few millimetres. But for pike fishing, generally, if you set so that the alarm goes off after about an inch and a half of movement, that is usually sufficient. But the facility is there to, to go even more delicate if you should need to. So I'm all set up. I've got three rods out on different baits. I've got lamprey, herring, and um, a smelt on that one. They're all in different positions, different distances out. And I'm gonna make a cup of coffee now and sit back and await developments. Well, I've finally hooked a fish on a piece of lamprey and uh, it's coming towards the end of the day. I didn't think I was going to get one, but uh, I've been moving the baits, trying them in different parts of the lake and I've obviously just landed on one. This one's come pretty soon after recasting. Not a very good day to demonstrate catching on the ledge of dead bait, but at least we've got one to show for it. Actually, it's quite a nice looking fish. Oh yeah, quite a pretty looking fish here. <laughs> Safely in the net. Well, it's a very, very pretty fish. Been feeding well. Very welcome on a really cold day like this. I was worried whether we would catch. Oh, look at that. The fish in these clear water pits are absolutely beautiful. That's a fabulous looking fish. I'm really pleased with it. And typical of a cold weather fish, it's hooked right at the, right at the front of the jaw. That's going to come out pretty easy. And that's where you want them hooked at the front of the jaw. Let's take one more look at her and then she's going back in the water. Well, there she goes, back underneath the ice. And she's away. Well, I think even though it's been a cold day, I've had a good chance to demonstrate my ledger dead bait technique. On a milder day, I'd have had a lot more runs, but on a day like this, following the coldest night of the year so far, I think, I think I've done quite well to get one run. And I'm more than pleased with that beautiful fish. Well, I was happy catching one fish for the day and I was just about to pack off and the light has nearly gone and one of my other rods has gone. So what a bonus, eh? Two fish on a really cold day. Really pleased. There are some very big pike in this pit, but I don't think this is one of them. But on a day like this, just catching a fish is, uh, is a bit of a bonus. Normally they don't fight very hard when it's as cold as this, but 
this one's putting up quite a good fight for a cold water fish. This one I'd recast the bait about 10 minutes ago and I'd cast it as far as I possibly could. And that's the beauty of having a powerful rod when you're ledgering. You do get the chance to fish at long range if you need to. Here it comes. Oh, and look, there's another one. Oh, a big one's grabbed it. I can't believe it. A big pike has just taken it. Well, I can't believe what's happening. Oh no, he's loosed it. We're okay. Well, that was a bit of unexpected excitement. I wasn't expecting to catch another pike and uh, I certainly wasn't expecting that big one to take it. Well, that one took uh, a herring tail. So there it is. There's the hook out of the way. There's the piece of herring it was caught on. And there's the little pike that was unfortunately grabbed by that big one. It hasn't come to any harm, so I'll get a straight back. Well, it's almost nightfall, but having seen that big pike, I've got to try and catch it. And I'll put a small smelt on. I'm just going to wobble it through the area and just hope it's still interested. That was really impressive to see that happening. It's not the sort of thing you see every day, especially right under your feet. <laughs> it was certainly all fired up. It was really feeding that fish. Maybe it just wants something big to eat. It might not bother with uh, a small piece of bait like this. No, the water's absolutely gin clear and, and even in this fading light I can see the bait coming in. Well I reckon I've got just a few more minutes before the light's gone but I'm going to persevere. You never know. Well, that really took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting that big fish to come and grab that jack as I was bringing it in. And it really was a big fish and I'd love to catch it, but it's gonna to have to wait for another day. So if you wanna join me again on some other occasion, you may just find me down here, perhaps using a different method, and hopefully I'll get it on the bank and show you how big it is.